We are with uh, Dr. Ravi Damodaran, uh, President, Technology and Strategy of the Vara Group. Uh, Ravi, first of all, uh, we believe that uh, uh, in your quest towards new technologies, uh, which are the areas that will, which parts of your businesses will see those uh, in, on ground? Yeah, thanks uh, Sumo for the opportunity. Uh, we don't look at it from purely a business angle. We rather look at it from a product and systems evolution mm. point of view and the market needs point of view. So uh, the Indian market basically needs products driven by uh, fuel efficiency. So that means light weighting, emissions, uh, safety is coming in big time now. Uh, these are the two things and uh, sometime later on I would add connectivity to that. Not now, my focus areas are basically driven by light weighting and fuel efficiency. Uh, safety is just about coming. So from that angle if you see <coughs> some of our products are lighting, they are already there, we are technology leaders in lighting that is driven a lot by safety. And in India we are bringing in LED technologies on two-wheeler headlamps that is I think today primarily driven by styling but it has an benefit of uh, fuel efficiency and safety also. Some other technologies like uh, electrification, hybrids are in my mind. We are working on some concepts there. Too early to speak on the details there. But those for two-wheelers as well? We are In India, we are primarily focused on two-wheelers. Mm -hmm. And in our external exterior lighting business, it's almost entirely passive. That's, that's the dichotomy. And, uh, and, and the technology on, on the air filters, which you are saying, taking it to the next level, could you throw some light on how different will it be in terms of uh, what is available compared to what is available in the market and how have we achieved that? Yes, yeah, so again, uh, our baseline is we are in the two-wheeler market, we are air filter supplies to the motorcycle and scooters uh, and uh, the trend is changing. Uh, so typically technologies flow in from four-wheelers to two-wheelers. So from the west to India, first passenger cars, then to two-wheelers. So what is current technology in passenger cars is uh, uh, filter media is uh, uh, impregnated paper. The tool industry is moving from foam filters to uh, paper filters and maybe impregnated media. Now the reason being engines are transitioning to more and more high performance with longer durability expectations. So you need lesser and lesser particles going into the engine so you need more and more filtration efficiency. Foam was used because it's best at capturing dust. You know, So dust capturing uh, capacity is high but it does allow a lot of fine particles to pass through. Paper on the other hand doesn't have that much dust capturing uh, ability but it restricts more fine particles from passing through. So from that point of view you require paper and better capture mechanisms to allow less fine particles to pass. That's a requirement from a, a product and market point of view. So <coughs> Instead of you know looking at what my competition is doing, uh, what is the next evolution, I looked at you know what is missing in the market. You know, I am here, maybe our competition is here. A typical uh, benchmarking and evolution method is I will do something to reach here by the time the competition goes here. So I look at you know when I do all the benchmarking and market needs un uh, uh, understanding, I see where is the market heading. So we talked about you know higher durability. So what do you need? And I flow it down to product needs. When I come down to components, I said, and my target is always not to be here, but to be here. Because it takes a development time. So yes. by the time, I should be well ahead of anybody in the competition. So I also take a look at what has been, what's the big challenge here? So biggest challenge is <clears throat> today the filter media selection is a trial and error process. And the paper maker has, the media maker has a lot of, you know, selection of media, you just, by trial and error, you'll make out, you know, what meets the requirement. But I'm kind of working on a quantitative uh, algorithm that will predict the filter performance from simply paper characteristics like uh, uh, fiber distribution, fiber orientation, pore size distribution. I can characterize this as long as I have a transfer function. I don't need the trial and error. I can so the medium will continue, continue to be paper? But it can be anything. Uh, characteristics. It can be anything. So I can choose that. If the, if the customer says I need more of uh, fine particle capturing, maybe I'll have a different type of paper and more of impregnation. Mm. If the customer says I need more of dust holding and you know only so much of uh, filtration, I may not need to go for that one. So I can tailor. 
right? I don't need that trial and error. So this is a diff this is a uh, known methodology in uh, academic circles around the world. It has never been applied to the industry here. So what I'm doing is taking the best of academia and, and the needs of the industry and marrying them together to get me a uh, product that will be setting me apart from everybody. When you say set apart, uh, would you quantify the kind of uh, <coughs> say, uh, advantages uh, that uh, the filter would have vis-a-vis -vis, uh, others in the market? So obviously, uh, we have to uh, consider performance mm -hmm. with cost. You know, being a cost-sensitive market, we have to give more at a lesser cost. Now always when you have a trial and error design principle, you are buffering up something. When you buffer up something, that means you over design, here you are elevating the cost. So by this precise prediction methodology, transfer functions, I am just taking away the uh, over design part and I can afford to bring the cost a little lower. Uh, while still meeting all the uh, meet, meeting or exceeding the performance expectations. But uh, when it comes to parameter, when compared to the competitor, uh, I mean, could you quantify, I mean, uh, to what level, uh, how does your product compare and uh, in terms of cost as well? So I, I always tell my guys, keep the cost the same. Find out, you know, how much is the over design. Do a precise design and also which is robust to variations and meet it at the same cost. That's one way to go. The other is, <clears throat> can I exceed the performance of the existing product? And of course, the cost will go, but then that's an added value I'm giving. Mm -hmm. So these are two uh, approaches I can take with the same methodology. And how much have you reduced the uh, flow of the particle matters into, into the engine with, with this new technology? See, what I think people haven't been uh, looking into is, for example, I'll take some numbers here. Filtration efficiency, people say 99.9, .9, 99.96 .9, and all. So from 99.9 .9 to 96 doesn't make much of a difference. <clears throat> so we are telling that we're able to say how much of fine particles you have reduced. So that little 0.06 to 0.08 is actually reducing fine particles by about seven times. That becomes a wow, right? When I hear, because this is all I'm designing for uh, a customer who tells me that it's the fine particles that may be destroying my engine. Mm. So I need to focus on the fine particles, right? So first is I hear the voice of the customer, you know. Mm. So I have different solutions for different uh, customers. So you manage to reduce it by up to seven, seven times. It can be more. It I mean, this more. is just one example I'm uh -huh. giving. So on an hour performance parameter, maybe pressure drop, it can be some other number, right? Uh -huh. So I'll give you the numbers once a product is out. Uh -huh. These are experimental numbers right now. I'm uh, giving you based on one certain yeah. and wh when will the product be out <coughs> I am hoping in a year okay. yeah, it depends on uh, uh, how uh, how fast a progress we make on the uh, uh, prediction algorithm and overall I mean you are also in charge of <laughs> business strategy uh, the way the growth curve has been quite good for Varrock uh, now in the what what is the next frontiers of growth you see uh, or you int intend uh, to make for the Varrock Group? <coughs> so, sometime I did mention that, you know, for investing in technology, a certain amount of scale is required. Mm. So, I think our lighting business has that scale and uh, and that's because it's global. And we will continue on that path. Uh, the strategy for the lighting business is to ensure that we support our customers' global programs. That means uh, we may have to set up uh, footprints in some re regions of the world we are not in today. Mm -hmm. So that drives my growth strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, innovation always has been part of uh, their uh, portfolio. In the Indian businesses, <coughs> we are in a fragmented market, so each product line doesn't have the scale to invest in technology. So I need to look at them together. Uh, so that is why I'm selective. I am not able to invest in technology in uh, all the 16 product lines. I don't need to. Mm -hmm. So I look at the uh, you know crystal ball and say which of the products uh, will evolve in what manner and which of the products uh, will not see the light of the day. Right? For example, when fuel injection comes, one of our products, the CDI, goes away. Mm -hmm. So I look at that and then uh, decide where to invest in. So electrification is driving a lot of my investments. Light weighting is an R1, this is uh, driving investment. Safety will be the third one. Mm -hmm. And when you look at, uh, when you uh, talk about uh, po uh, potential new geographies to expand your footprint, and which, which would uh, they be? So we are not there in Brazil today, this is South America. 
we not and brazil is the biggest uh, market there in south america we are not in brazil we're also not in russia but russia we kind of uh, put on hold for a while because of the market uh, has on. uh yeah situation there uh, but we are evaluating our options to support our customers in the south american market and uh, here we are standing in this uh, venue of this uh, uh, automotive forum on the seminar on industry economic collaboration your first impression of of the event and secondly where do you think uh, we india is at currently when it comes to this industry economic collaboration and what is the scope you see in the future see i think we are far away uh, at the lowest level of collaboration i place uh, industry and academia the next is customer and supplier today customer and suppliers also don't share de- <laughs> designs to each other right? it's a risk it's a risk they feel right so that has to come uh, so customer supplier uh, partnership on innovation and the next level would be i am partnering with a competition the west has that kind of mm-hmm. models right so delphi bosch and denso yes. will, will fund the same project consolidation so that's true collaboration uh, that's right somewhere in between comes the other organizations like a uh, research institute but uh, that's the first level mm-hmm. so we are still trying to uh make that make sure that the first level is achieved nicely and your thoughts on this particular seminar i mean uh, how do you find it good bad ugly <laughs> so i thought some of the uh big people from the industry were missing you know i think they should participate in a I personally got to uh, meet uh, two facets. One is the uh, students. You, you know, sitting in my cubicle, I know in a, a country of 1.2 billion, mm-hmm. there's no way there's a scarcity of talent. But everybody where I hear is, you know, we can't hire. There's no talent. They're running away. Not true. Here I met so many guys whom I would immediately hire. So there are, and these kind of forums are the ones where, you know, despite I'm sorry to say, despite the information technology, you know. Mm-hmm. no i think we have probably uh more disinformation than information so so these kind of physical get togethers still have value the other uh section i met was these research guys and uh, uh academy guys <coughs> whom i am able to talk to and uh, express an opinion from an industry's point of view instead of you know blaming i see it as a opportunity to tell them what is it that i need mm-hmm. and what is it that you are good at mm-hmm. right typically we have you know had a stand off saying industry will say okay those guys in the academia they are doing some high level stuff which we we don't we don't require and the academia will say you know the work that the industry wants is not technologically challenging but as long as we start talking like i like the air filter project right mm-hmm. we are building bridges between academia the the prediction algorithm is something that the uh, guys in iit will love mm-hmm. right <coughs> and this is an industry project so i thought that was a good part uh, meeting these two uh, broadly uh, stakeholders and i i wish there were more participation from the industry to take advantage of the last of the vast uh, talent base we already have okay. thank you thank you very thank you so Always much a pleasure yeah. thank you so much same here